Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 29. Tesla stocks goes to new highs, and Tesla hardware 4 is coming, and Tesla might be building the world's most powerful computer. SpaceX makes more historic flight, and Elon Musk wants to jazz it up a bit. All this and much more to come on today's episode. <clears throat> Let's dive right in. Before we get started, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new patrons. Revue Mutsu, Amon Stack, Erik Olsen, Vincent Holder. Thank you so much for your support, guys, and let's get into the news. Let's put our living stereo stylus in this groove. Tesla stock has been doing really well since the news of the stock split, and have got to new highs, hitting that $2,000 mark for the first time ever, and its highs close ever $2,001. And some might think it's time to sell their Tesla stock and cash in, but I cannot say it as good as William Wallace. <laughs> this is of course not financial advice, but going to be exciting to see what will happen after the split when a lot of people can get back in the action. I for one know a lot of people that really are looking forward for this because they missed out the first time around when they could afford it. And let's take a look at someone who really burned his fingers on test stock, but still have not learned the lesson. He is still screaming about Tesla is just a car company. <laughs> Can you guess who this is? Oh yeah, good old Jim Chambers. What are you teaching about Tesla, Jim? Because you win some and you lose some, and this trade I know has been incredibly painful. Um, it's, it's been painful, yes. I think at the end of the day, Tesla is an auto company. It is not some uh, sort of... Yeah, I know I know that's not uh, But I do think they make cars, and, and, and everything else is, uh, is the company painting a picture of some futuristic uh, set of businesses that uh, are pretty mundane like making batteries. Oh my God. <laughs> Even the CNN host cites that. Some uh, sort of, some uh. sort of. <laughs> Good old Dim Chanos is clinging on to his short position. Good luck with that. And it looks like new ships has arrived in Europe with a fresh new batch of Teslas. According to this marine traffic, two ship has just arrived and two more is on the way. So now we will probably see Tesla's sales starting to take off again in Europe, but have to wait and see for Q3 delivery numbers. And Tesla donates 350 charging stations to 28 parks in Canada to improve access and convenience. The government of Canada announced that Tesla has donated charging stations for electric vehicles to 28 of the country's most popular parks and will be made available for all visitors. Park Canada said in a statement, this gift from Tesla allows Park Canada to better serve visitors who have chosen electric vehicles and is part of Park Canada's ongoing work in green operations and fight the climate change. Very nice. After revealing that the Roadster 2.0 will have the rocket thrusters, Elon Musk continue to fuel our interest with new details about their supercar. Musk tweeted that the Roadster's 2.0's wheel will only have one center knot. In this next tweet, he clarified that the knot will be quite large. The use of one single center knot allows for greater room between the wheel and the wheel hub. This extra space can be used for larger brake disc and calibers, which will make it able to go even faster around the racetrack. SpaceX makes more historic flight with reusable rockets, more Starlink satellites and other good stuff. SpaceX launched yet another Falcon 9 rocket with 58 Starlink satellite and 3 Planet Labs Skysat on board. But this one was a special launch because this was the sixth time the Falcon 9 rocket booster took off and landed again. Which we also got some great shots of here. But this flight also marks the 100th launch for SpaceX, 
and 92nd for the Falcon 9. SpaceX are pretty much making history every time they fly, and SpaceX was also able to give us these wonderful pictures of Mr. Tree catching a fairing half. And as you can hear in this little video from Elon, there was some elevator music on this video. And Elon did also tweet, elevator music is underrated. And that was actually a little hint of what is coming for the Teslas. Because Elon tweeted later on, new Tesla features coming to enable your car to play snake jazz and Polynesian elevator music through the outside speakers everywhere you go. Very cool. And the work on the Starship is still speeding along. But while we are waiting for the SN8 to fly with nose cone and flaps and everything, here you can see an animation of what this will probably look like. Going to be just mind-blowing to see this in action. So everything is going very well for SpaceX, and they did just raise $1.9 billion in the latest founding rounds, and SpaceX also secured a contract to deploy the next fleet of SES satellites. So it seems there's nothing but sunshine ahead for SpaceX. And still, more great progress at the Gigafactory 4 in Berlin. Tesla was granted early construction permits to drive pilot at the standing section. Also, concrete is getting poured on the roof of the paint shop. The pace just seems to be increasing at Gigafactory 4. And we also got some local guy, Alex, that supposedly is working at the site, tweeting about the factory progress. Drive unit building planned to be finished in 19 days. Enormous pressure, but fun to work for. Everyday calls from the US to validate progress. US team awake at 3 to 4 a.m. US time to be reachable for the local team. Elon himself calls. Spirits must better versus other projects. So cool. He did also give some tweets about German politicians and leaders' comments about the Tesla Gigafactory. I will just give you one example here. Ferdinand Dudenhofer, head of Car Institute. Tesla gives us development aid. Our suppliers are being pulled in and so are the car manufacturers. The project is a blessing for Germany. So nice to see all the progress and good things this project will bring to Germany. And the progress is of course also unreal at Gigafactory 3 in Shanghai. The Tesla Model Y should be rolling off the production line early 2021, say executive. And Tesla has shown the big casting machine that is going to make the Model Y that is already being put in place at Gigafactory 3. And Tesla Gigafactory in Texas is also moving at lightning speed, with pill drivers already on site, meaning that the foundation are coming soon. And we can also see on this video from Jeff Roberts the swamp machine in action. This place is going to be mind-boggling. Can you keep up? I have a hard time keeping up with this pace. It is just unreal. And they just can't get enough of big power plants with batteries in South Australia. French renewable energy developer Neon has applied to develop a huge $3 billion wind, solar and energy storage project, including proposed large batteries that are nearly 10 times larger than the expanded Tesla Big Battery in Hornsdale. <laughs> Whoa! At the moment, Neon has not announced which company will be battery supplier. Nevertheless, Neon already has a fruitful and profitable partnership with Tesla, which is why there is reason to suspect that Tesla could become the battery supplier. And speaking of battery, Panasonic will boost the battery capacity at the Nevada factory for Tesla next year in an investment expected to exceed $100 million. 
Panasonic will add another line at the Gigafactory in Nevada to increase capacity by 10% to 39 gigawatt hours per year. So if anyone thought Tesla would end the collaboration with Panasonic because of their own in-house battery production, they seem to be wrong. Tesla want all the batteries they can get their hands on. And they probably get all the lithium they need for the batteries just around the corner. Because Lithium Americas has a mine just three hours drive from Gigafactory in Nevada at the Taka Pass which will mine and process lithium and also produce batteries. If Lithium Americas becomes a supplier of lithium or batteries for Tesla, it will be a very profitable partnership. And the oil state, Qatar, gets its first Tesla battery-powered storage system. The facility is built in collaboration with Qatar-based Alathea Group and Tesla. It is intended to store power during peak hours or when the station reaches maximum load, as well as to improve network voltage. The battery storage system are just popping up all over the world and Tesla is supplying the batteries. Very good business indeed. Batteries, batteries, batteries. It is all about the batteries. And do you remember one and a half years ago when Elon revealed the Hardware 3? He also said that they were already halfway with the Hardware 4. And it seems it is almost ready. Yes, Hardware 4 is common. In collaboration with Broadcom, Tesla has designed Hardware 4 and reportedly contracted TSMC to make 7 nanometer HPC full self driving chip in Q4 2020. The initial production capacity is limited to 2000 pieces, while full production is expected in Q4 2021. And Elon was also on Twitter again, asking people to come work for him. Pick me! Pick me! <laughs> and no, he, he needs uh, smart people, so yeah, very smart people for his AI and computer chip team. Because they're also working on this supercomputer that is going to run their dojo training program that can run through a vast amount of video data for their full self-driving car. And this supercomputer is no joke. Elon did mention that it would be able to make operation in the Exoflop, a truly useful Exoflop at the de facto FP32. An Exoflop is a quotillion floating operation per second, or a thousand petaflop, meaning that it can make a billion billions operation a second. Whew. That should be faster than the fastest supercomputer is able to do right now, Considering there is currently a race to break the exoflop barrier in supercomputing with companies like Intel and AMD. So maybe Tesla will also make the most powerful computer in the world. Sure. And another Tesla Model X was in an accident. But this time it was a little different. Because the Tesla was hit by an airplane. Yes, you heard right, an airplane. Luckily, everyone survived, and the Tesla owner did post this on his Facebook page. Many saw this in the news just now. I'm getting calls with concerns about our safety. Want to let all my friends and family know that Ari and I are completely fine. God and this car truly saved us today. No scratches on us. No one believed me when I called them to let them know a plane crashed into me. Tesla people thought it was a prank. Wife laughed at me at first. Jokes aside, this was a serious matter. Saw my life flash in that minute. A second is all it takes. Truly one of the safest cars in the world. Even a plane can't take it down. And Tesla just got beaten. By Tesla. A Tesla Model 3 performance modified by unplugged performance. Who also makes a body kit for the Tesla Model 3 that improved the range by 13% at 70 miles per hour. Pretty impressive. I will leave a link for an article about this if you want to learn more. But Unplugged Performance did just break the Laguna Seca racetrack record set by Tesla with their Model S Plaid prototype. Unplugged Performance CEO Ben Schaffer said about their stop in Laguna Seca. Our expectation at Laguna Seca was simply to validate the car with Randy and to make sure we are safely dialed in for Pikes Peak. 
It definitely shocked us all when we beat the lap time of the mighty Plaid Model S prototype in our Model 3. The crazy thing is that we are still having a lot of additional modification being prepared and we are not near the car's full potential with our upgrades yet. Very nice and good luck at Pikes Peak. And Tesla is about to implement two-factor authentication to secure accounts. Elon Musk says that Tesla is finally going to push two-factor authentication to secure customers' account after what he describes as being embarrassingly late. Because Elon tweeted, sorry, this is embarrassingly late. Two-factor authentication via SMS or authenticator app is going through final validation right now. So we're probably going to get this soon with an over-the-air update. You gotta love those over-the-air updates. And President Abinata signals a new era in sustainable energy for the Dominican Republic as he arrives in a Tesla Model S. Tesla has long been a symbol of change for the better, and the latest example, newly elected president of the Dominican Republic, Luis Abinada, arrived at the National Congress in his Tesla Model S to take the oath of office as president. Now Tesla Model S has become the official car of the president of the Dominican Republic. And let's end off with a bit of fun. As I talked about in news episode 27, I went to Berlin to see the Gigafactory for myself. And the great thing about driving in Germany is of course Das Autobahn, where there's some places are no speed limit. So I thought it was a good time to try my Tesla Model 3 long range to see how easily it could get up to 230 km an hour. Yeah, that was no problem at all, <laughs> except my wife got really scared, so <laughs> cannot recommend driving this fast. It is of course the acceleration, that's the fun bit anyway. But that is all we have time for in this news episode. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps out this video a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support me even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of the show and get your shout out here on this channel. All the names you see floating by right now are my amazing Patreon producers of this show. You can go to patreon.com slash Tesla and see all the perks in there and choose your level of support and get your name on this list. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and... Be nice.